falls like this, one of the reasons Diane Tamblin decided to install cameras in her father's long-term care room. What she didn't expect to capture, staff stepping over him to change the bed as he lay on the floor. Or other staff hanging out in his room without a mask to make a call. Tamblin's father moved in to St. Joseph's at Fleming in August. From the start, there were issues. I would mention them and they would either try to do something to make it better, but then it would slip back off the radar again. But when Omicron hit, she caught staff wearing masks poorly or not at all and complained to the ministry. It was not unusual to, to see three, four, five people a day not wearing masks in the home, even during outbreak. After that, the care home sent her this letter telling her she was under investigation for harassing staff and told her it was limiting her access to the home. And then, three weeks ago, just as the ministry published its inspection reports, triggered by her complaint, which found violations of infection prevention and control and the plan of care requirement, Tamblin was served this formal notice of trespass, restricting her to two visits a day between 9 and 6, and limiting her access to her father's room. The penalty, a $2,000 fine. I think I only read the first few words and I just burst into tears. The trespass notice also means she can't attend family council meetings. This is what it's for. But on Wednesday, so. she decided to chance being ticketed and go to that meeting. I'm very anxious. <laughs> I'm very on edge. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm scared to death. But I also know that if I don't do this, nothing's going to get better for my dad or the residents in there. I don't have any choices left. This is, this is it. Starvation. Outside, advocates who fought to pass Vula's law, which is supposed to prevent homes from barring access to families. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. Two hours later, no police, no ticket. A small victory for advocates. Mm. You're worth it. I get hugged in. <laughs> we work with the government to make sure this changes because this isn't right. Yeah. We shouldn't have to put you through this, but the it's fact okay. that you're standing up and, and asserting your rights for you and your dad, thank you, from mm -hmm. Ontario. They'll dance in your blind spot of ignorance. They count on the fact that you don't know your rights. In a statement to CBC News, the care home says it can't comment because of its ongoing harassment investigation. And despite issuing the notice, it says Tamblin has full access to her father. And it said staff were retrained on infection control. Tamblin is convinced the trespass order is meant to silence her. And it's retaliatory. That's all it is. So, Katie, what a lot of people really want to know is can these homes actually restrict someone's access? Well, Adrian, it all depends on who you ask. You might remember last March, the Ontario legislature unanimously passed Vula's law. So this is a law that isn't necessarily legally enforceable, but it was an expression of support from sitting members of the legislature that long-term care homes should not be allowed to ban or restrict families from seeing their loved ones. This came out of a marketplace investigation a few years before. Now, that said, the ministry says homes do have the discretion to bar visitors who misbehave. So the question here, is this a question of advocacy or is it harassment? All right, really important work. Thank you. You're welcome.